to serve as the chief judge for Wisconsin's largest judicial district, which is comprised of Milwaukee County, and it includes 47 state trial courts, 22 court commissioners, and 19 municipalities in their municipal courts. Our court system's key roles are threefold, to protect the rights, privileges, and opportunities of our citizens guaranteed by our constitutions, to maintain the rule of law, and to provide a forum which is accessible and fair to resolve disputes that come before the courts. In response to our community's needs and demands of our courts in Milwaukee, we are not like the courts of yesteryear. Throughout Wisconsin and in Milwaukee, and even throughout the nation, judges have witnessed the very worst of man's inhumanity to man. We have heeded the voices of the victims, the families of both the victims and the families of the perpetrators. And in response, we have stretched within our constitutional boundaries. Our courts are not even more engaged, working cooperatively with others in the justice system to stem the tide of violence. In response to domestic violence, random gun violence, sexual assault, and other heinous crimes against individuals in our community, we also recognize the non-criminal factors, such as mental illness and drug addiction. And nearly half of your 47 courts are now dedicated to criminal cases. We have four judges, for example, who preside solely over homicide and sexual assault cases. We have three courts dedicated entirely to domestic violence cases. Too many men, women, and children lose their lives to gun violence. When we witness an increase in the number of gun cases in our community, our courts in Milwaukee instituted a strategic way of dealing with the problem. There are a great number of people who lose their lives to gun violence. But do you know that there are even more, a greater number of victims who are wounded by gunfire and survive to tell about it? We therefore have assigned judges to handle all of those cases. We have a judge assigned to handle the cases where we call them non-fatal shootings. The looming numbers of these cases caused us to establish a different operation. We now have five experienced judges helping out with the gun, illegal gun possession cases so that the non-fatal shooting cases can be handled more rapidly. To address the community's problems associated with illegal drug trade, drug sales, and drug manufacturing, we've set up special courts for that. We have two treatment courts where we use therapeutic models to deal with citizens. We give them a chance to sort of work off the problems that they cause for the community. We give them an opportunity to address substance abuse and addiction and PTSD and mental illness in exchange for dismissed prosecution. We have five judges responsible for hearing juvenile delinquency cases. Most recently in our juvenile courts, we have incorporated the philosophy of trauma-informed care to address the significant needs of our children so we can help them deal with abuse, neglect, mental health, addictions, educational needs, and criminality. Despite all of the advances that we've made in the courts, we are now confronted with a dangerous situation involving the Department of Corrections, Lincoln Hills and Copper Lake juvenile detention facilities, where there are profound and persistent institutional failures to keep our children safe. There's been a complete failure to provide our children with adequate educational mental health, trauma-informed care, and other therapeutic services that these children need to make a go of it in life. We must demand and we must do more to do more to make these children more life-performing when they return to our community. If we fail these children, we risk great harm to them in our communities. For over two decades as a trial court judge in your county, I have looked down from the bench into faces of thousands of people, men and women, and children who were victims or had their families victimized by violence, by perpetrators who themselves had suffered violence. I have heard these families say in the midst of their suffering that what we do as a community is not enough. There is a belief that after all of the many cases that I've had presided over as a single judge, 
that I should have extracted some answers. I'm frequently questioned by families in the grocery store, in the drugstore, in the hallways of the courthouse. Give us some solutions to pass on to our Andy and Amy's to give them a better chance of raising a good child to have a quality life. Explain to us, they say, all of the reasoning behind the bad acts. Shed some light on us, judges, if you will, on what more a parent or a school can do in these situations. Was it drug-induced behavior, mental illness, or trauma of some kind that caused this person to hurt me so bad? Was the offender abused sexually or in some other way? Was he bullied senselessly, or did he suffer some other form of trauma which was left untreated? Yes, judges are people too. We ride the bench in the road, but we are people too. We feel passionately about these questions, and we deeply want to answer them. I can recall, for example, in closing, so many of the cases, I ride by the places in the county now, and I remember certain people. I remembered a talented, handsome young boy. I presided over the trial of his murderer. He was gunned down on a playground. I know his name, I know the playground, I know the place. A police officer sitting in his squad car, taking an earned, much needed break, unaware that moments later he would be gunned down by a bank robber who thought he was there to arrest him. I know his name, I know the place. A teenage boy executed by his teenage friend for a $100 drug debt. I know their names, I know their families, I know the place. A son high on illegal drugs crashing his mother's face into the sink faucet for more drug money. I know her name, I know her face. A wealthy housewife through clenched teeth approached my bench with a wired jaw asking me for leniency for the perpetrator, her husband, and father of her children. These real life stories become part of our being as judges. We are passionate about sharing what we have learned on and off the bench. Within the constitutional confines of the judicial code and our oath, we will continue to do what we can to teach, to seek and gather resources and answers for an effective court operation to promote equality, tolerance, respect, and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you.